You don't have to use any of these lenses. You can make a fantastic prize winning image with literally any lens. But if you want a really quirky, characterful, unusual image to make the best out of your digital mirrorless camera in combination with vintage lenses, then I recommend you try at least some of these. Well, hey everybody, thank you for checking in once again and welcome to another episode. Well now, today in this episode, I am going to show you some of the nicest vintage lenses I've ever used. And if you want a really nice lens for your digital mirrorless camera or indeed your film camera, these are my recommendations. Some of them are very cheap. Some of them are a little expensive, but they will all make you fantastic, quirky, unusual, characterful images. Now, of course, you don't have to use any of these lenses. You can make a fantastic prize winning image with literally any lens. You don't have to have any particular kit to make a fantastic image. But if you want a really quirky, characterful, unusual image to make the best out of your digital mirrorless camera in combination with vintage lenses, then I recommend you try at least some of these. And don't forget, if you buy one and you don't like it, these lenses don't lose their value, or at least they're not doing at the moment. So you can always sell them on and not lose anything. You might even make a little bit of profit, assuming, of course, you've not paid far too much for them in the first place. So without further ado and quacking and yakking from me, let's have a look at our lenses. And I've got quite a few to show you today. I've got quite a few of my favorites lined up to show you today. So buckle up, strap in and hold on tight because here we go. First of all, <clears throat> this is one of my favorite lenses. It may even be my favorite all time lens. This is the Konica AR Hexanon 40 millimeter F 1.8. And I've talked about this lens before. I chanced upon it, happened to chance upon it. It was attached to a Konica FS1 camera that I bought. And when I used it, I was utterly utterly astonished such as the quality of this lens. Firstly, the 40 millimeter focal length means you need to get a little closer, but not too close. So to intimidate your subjects, but just close enough to see them nicely. That 40 millimeter focal length seems to work perfectly on the street and for general photography. It's an F 1.8 lens. So it can make plenty of blur if you go close. Its closest, uh, its minimum focus distance is 45 centimeters. Not particularly close, but it will make some blur if you want it to. However, this is not essentially a blur monster lens. This is not a lens that you would buy particularly to make blur. This is really an ideal street lens and I'll just show it to you briefly in close up. So there's the Konica AR Hexanon 40 millimeter lens and it's nothing particularly special to look at and in fact it's nothing particularly special to handle either because these lenses, these Konica lenses, don't feel particularly well made in the hand. They are well made but they don't feel particularly well made. The aperture as you can see, as I'm turning it, you might be able to see it's a little bit clunky and clanky. It doesn't have the lovely smoothness that some other lenses have. But nevertheless, that glass is beautiful. I don't know if you can see the blue coatings there, the bluish purple coatings there. It's a very small lens. It's a, almost a pancake lens, so it doesn't really make your camera too big, even with an adapter. And if you have it on a film camera, it's absolutely tiny. This is a beautiful, beautiful lens. And this is one I'm absolutely going to keep hold of. 
So a fantastic little lens. What are its qualities? Well, colour. It makes very, very, very beautiful colour. I don't know what it is about conical lenses. Certainly these later AR Hexanon lenses. But they make astonishing, stunning colour. And this 40mm is the one that makes the nicest colour of all. Certainly of the ones I've tested. And I have tested quite a few conical lenses. This really is possibly the sweet spot of conical lenses and it's certainly a beautiful beautiful lens to buy and to try conical lenses perhaps because they weren't top tier names like olympus canon or nikon haven't been terribly well appreciated uh, but in recent years that's past couple of years that's started to change the price of this one has started to increase you used to be able to find one of these for 20 to 30 pounds now it's more like 50 to 60 pounds but it is a beautiful lens and when you put it on your camera you will know why it's a beautiful lens very sharp beautiful color very very beautiful background blur just a stunner get one try one you won't regret it okay the next lens is an old friend it's the helios 44 let me put my glasses on so i can see what i'm talking about yeah, the Helios 44, and this lens has featured on this show many, 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 many times. I've kept hold of these lenses. I've got quite a few of them, and the reason is they're just fantastic. There's nothing quite like them. There are two versions. Get the KMZ version. They were made by other manufacturers, I think, Valdai was one and there was another one which i can't remember which i'll put on screen if i can remember but the kmz made versions are the ones you want this is not a kmz version but it demonstrates the lens well um it's an f2 58 millimeter lens it's a copy a direct copy of the 1930s zeiss biotar so you get the 1930s look but a very unusual very characterful very 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 um individual 1930s look it's got a lot of swirl and the edges where uh, if you get the distances right and you've got specular highlights in the background this is the original swirler because the specular highlights become elliptical shapes at the edges and they give an impression of swirling or movement so they're great for portraits or any sort of unusual visual effects you want to make. They're absolutely beautiful lenses and they're a lot of fun and they're cheap. These lenses can be found for about 30 to 50 pounds depending on the one you get. But do make sure you get a KMZ version like this one. This is a KMZ version beautiful isn't it it's a, a polished aluminium body this is one of the rare 13 blade versions and if you can get a 13 blade version they are expensive they will cost you from 100 to 150 pounds whereas this one the eight blade version will cost you around 50 pounds but these can be found cheaply i actually bought this one for 30 pounds it was sitting on ebay for the weeks nobody wanted it so i just bought it for 30 pounds and i got myself a nice 13 blade helios 44 but even if you have to pay full price 100 to 150 pounds that's not a lot of money for a very 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 beautiful lens and these early kmz versions had the purple coatings let me show you so can you see there glinting in the sunlight somewhere the purple coatings that these early kmz versions had it wasn't just the 13 blade version ones that had it either the eight blade ones had it too there are some eight blade ones in this polished aluminium body and they had it too and quite a few of the later kmz versions had it also it's a great looking lens just look at how this thing looks it's a fantastic looking thing it really is it's it's got that real cool shape and it fits really nicely on any digital camera mostly they're an m42 mount this is an 
M39 mount, which is not the same as L39. And you might be able to see I've got a little adapter ring on here to, to uh, make it fit onto an M42 adapter. A lot of these early KMZ lenses were made in M39 mount, not L39 mount, very different. M39 mount for the early Zenit um, SLR cameras. However, they can be easily adapted by the addition of this little ring here, as I've done. A very, very beautiful lens. I mean, not the sharpest. This is 30s technology, so they're not going to be absolutely the sharpest lens wide open. They're, they're sharp enough, but they're not absolutely sharpest of lenses wide open. But they have such beautiful visual quirks. And the KMZ versions, especially these early versions, have very, very beautiful colours uh, and give an extraordinary image with also an infusion of a lovely vintage feel and character. So my advice, if you can, get a Helios 44. Get a KMZ version. An 8-blade version is great. A 13-blade version is fantastic. So... You pay your money and you take your choice. Either way, you won't be disappointed. Okay, the next lens is another piece of 30s technology. And this time, this one is directly from the 1930s. This is the uncoated Fed 10, sometimes known as the Indostar 10. F3.5, 50mm collapsible lens. It looks very like an Elmar. It was made by the early... Soviet photographic industry in Ukraine uh, where the industry began. Um, they began making copies of the Fed 2 camera and they were good copies, not quite as nicely finished but very very good cameras, very long lasting and uh, very capable cameras. I can't see that the people in Ukraine, having taken the design of the camera, would then start to design from scratch their own lens. It just doesn't make sense. So for me, this is a copy of an Elmar. I stand to be corrected. Absolutely, I stand to be corrected. But I would be very, very surprised if this was anything other than a copy of an Elmar, a Leica Elmar lens. Be that as it may... This is a beautiful, uncoated 1930s lens made for black and white film of the time. It doesn't do too well in colour. Colours are a little bit muddy and slushy and they don't come through terribly well. If you get really good light, they'll come through and not too many reflections they'll come through. But it works best in black and white. And in black and white, my gosh, it gives you such beautiful subtle tones of grey with a little bit of bloom and a little bit of flare and it's so reminiscent of those images you see from the 1930s and that's not surprising because those images were made with lenses like this some of them with this very lens I'll show you it a little more closely so there's the Fed lens the Fed 10 Indostar 10 lens what I'd like you to notice, if you can, if you can see it, get the exposure right, is the beautiful quality of the engraving on the front of the lens there. That's the equal of any engraving I've seen on a Leica lens. It's very, very, very beautifully finished. Um, the barrel is chrome. Everything works very, very nicely. There's no play in anything. I would say, personally, that this lens... Oh, I've got to get this exposure right. Sorry. I would say, personally, that this lens is the equal of anything that Leica made. I have tested this lens against uh, an Elmar, and, in fact, it came out slightly on top. The Elmar was an old slightly beaten up version so it wasn't entirely and absolutely a fair test but having said that this lens did come out on top of the Elmar and uh, gave a slightly nicer image either way I mean those are details either way 
this lens is a very beautiful old 1930s lens and it will give you very beautiful old 1930s style images and that's why I've kept this lens it was in a real mess when it came to me um, the, the doublet had separated so I had to find a way to get that back together I found a Heath Robinson way of doing that it's now got some dirt in it the aperture mechanism mechanism isn't quite working right it seems a bit loose inside something is tightening up but that doesn't matter, that's just servicing. This is a gorgeous lens, I intend to keep it. A good one of these will cost you about £100. It's well worth trying one. Buy one today, try one today. I don't think you'll be disappointed, but if you are, you can just sell it on. Right, the next lens I would like to show you is a very humble, very common lens. Again, it's based on 1930s technology. In fact, it's not just based on 1930s technology. It is a direct copy of the Zeiss Sonar 50mm F2 of the 1930s. It was made in the millions by KMZ, by the Soviet photographic industry, and it is the Jupiter 8. Now, this is a beautiful little lens. It was the standard lens on Zorki 4 models i'm just counting the aperture blades actually i'm surprised that it's got more than i thought it's got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten is it ten aperture blades so you get a nice round bokeh balls from the background this lens is a very beautiful lens it's sharp enough to use all day long it's not particularly sharp it's certainly not as sharp as a modern lens but for a vintage lens it's pretty sharp it's a rangefinder lens so it'll focus down to three feet or one meter only although if you're using it on a crop sensor camera that distance will effectively decrease you'll effectively be able to get that little bit closer not magic just optics it's a very beautiful lens and it's also a very cheap lens because it was made in the millions and millions and millions. Now, you may have heard some talk about quality control being not very good in the Soviet factories and that may well be true, but I can only speak from my own experience. I've handled probably 30 or 40 of these lenses and I've only had one dud or in all that time and that's because I think that lens had been opened and not put back together correctly so this is a very small lens it needs only a very small uh, adapter so it's very small on a mirrorless camera let's have a, a little look close up and there's our little Jupiter and these came in silver and black bodies. The black bodies were al almost always the later ones. In fact, they were always the later ones. This one is, can I see a serial number on it anywhere? Oh yeah, look, serial number is there. Focus, please. So the serial number is there. So it begins with 87. So we know this one was manufactured in 1987. But I've tested a bunch of these from 1955 right up until the late 80s. And there's no optical difference in any of them. They all behave beautifully. They all give beautiful colours. They all give beautiful background blur. And they're all very, very cheap. You can buy these lenses for between 20 to 40 pounds. Sometimes sellers are 60 pounds for them. Don't pay that because they're not worth that. They're worth about 40 pounds. And that's a reasonable price to pay for one. They're L39 mount. That means they'll fit on any Leica mount rangefinder. That's a lot of the Zorki. Uh, all the Zorki rangefinders, all the Fed rangefinders, all the Leica rangefinders, Reed, Siegel, any other L39 rangefinder you can think of, this lens will fit and it will also fit perfectly onto your mirrorless camera and make you some very, very beautiful images infused with a 1930s feel, but with really, really nice colours. This is not just a lens that will do black and white nicely. It is a coated lens. 
So a lovely little lens and I recommend that you get one of these. I don't think you'll go wrong. Now here's a lens that I've featured quite a lot on this channel and I've done that because it's one of my favourites and it's one of my favourites because it is such an extraordinary optic. Before I tried this lens, I had never known a lens so good, at least not a vintage lens. This at the time was the best vintage lens I've tried and it is still my gold standard for 50mm f 1.8 lenses i've never found one to better it i've found one or two that might come close might just equal it but it has such a character such an extraordinary personality that i don't think any can beat it this in my view is the king of the 51.8 so if you want the best 51.8 for your camera for your mirrorless camera or indeed for your film camera consider a Carl Zeiss Jena 50mm f1.8 pan collar they are beautiful they're very very sharp right from wide open stunningly sharp in fact right from wide open they have extraordinary color rendition unlike any other lens I've ever used the colors have a strength and a glow about them that's just extraordinary and the background blur is beautiful it's it's not always perfectly controlled but it is lovely and i just love this lens let's have a closer look over here so there's our little pancola and look at those coatings those coatings in my view go a long long way to giving the quality of image that comes out of these lenses they are really quite extraordinary this lens does not have the word Zeiss in it by coincidence it's nothing much to look at it just looks like a lens one of the great features of these CZJ lenses is that they do go very close and you'll see that this one goes right down to 0.3 oh if we can get some focus anyway you'll see that this one goes right down to 0.35 of a meter, 35 centimeters. So it's very, very close indeed. Significantly closer than most SLR lenses go. And that is a real boon and makes this a real useful lens in that it can get just that little bit closer than others. M42 mount, most were in M42 mount, there were some in exact amount. Don't be fooled by the Pancola F2 in exact amount, it's not the same lens and it's not as good a lens. What you want is a 50mm F1.8 Pancola. That is the king of the Pancolas. This one is a later version, it's not radioactive. The earlier version had a zebra body, alternate bright aluminium and black stripes that one is radioactive so if you're a bit shy of radioactive lenses maybe go for the later one these are not cheap lenses they go for about 100 to 150 pounds but they're well well worth it and if you want a lens that is just frankly the best 1.850 i've ever found get one of these. I don't think you'll be disappointed. Next on my list of must-have faves for any collection of truly fantastic vintage lenses is another one you've probably seen or may have seen on this show before. It's the CZJ Flectagon 2.4 f2.4 35mm and this is a gorgeous lens. I bought this lens many, many years ago on an old Practica Nova camera and I bought the whole lot for £5. I didn't really know what I was buying and it was only when I came to use the lens that I found out what an extraordinary piece of glass it actually was. I then did a little bit of research on it and found out about its tremendous reputation. So I was very pleased to have found such a bargain. 
It's a really versatile lens. It goes down to 19 centimeters. It's not a macro lens, but you can use it for product shots very easily if you want to. It's got beautiful blur and it's got very, very beautiful color. It's, it's just a stunning lens. The images really speak for themselves. I've never seen a lens with as nice color as nice blur and such sharpness that this one has it's clearly these are vintage lenses it's not as sharp as a modern lens but for a vintage lens it's very very sharp indeed from wide open and you don't really need to stop it down i'll give you a closer look over here so there's our little czj flectagon you can see the carl's Siena coatings there shimmering and glinting in the sunlight there is the lens itself it's a little longer than the pancola and it is an extender it does extend a fair old bit if you want to go to the minimum focus distance but that's all right i don't know it's about half an inch an inch or so um the maximum aperture focus please camera thank you the maximum aperture is f2.4 on this one there was an f2.8 version but it is reputed i haven't tried it but is it is reputed not to be quite as good the 2.4 is the one to go for there's the rear coated element as you can see and again this is an m42 mount so it'll mount on any number of film cameras and of course it will mount to any mirrorless camera also and i would recommend that if you want a really nice 35 mil that can get very very close and is a really versatile lens you can use this for general photography you can even use it for portraits if you want it does do a pretty nice portrait and it gets very very close uh, if you want to get very very close this is an extraordinary lens this is as good as vintage lenses get so if you really want the best if you really want to try the best get one of these they're not cheap they cost between 100 and 150 pounds but they're well worth it and please don't forget if you don't like it you can sell it on it's well worth getting one just to try just to see if you like it well those are my recommendations ladies and gentlemen for the finest lenses that you can put on your digital mirrorless camera and they'll all make you images that are full of character very very different character they've all got very very different character but they've all got a character that they can bring to your images and if you want a particular character for a particular image if you're shooting a wedding and you want a particular soft look or if you're shooting a landscape and you want a particular look any of these lenses not any of them but choose one of these lenses and they will do it for you so i do hope this episode i nearly said lesson then I've been a teacher too long. I do hope this episode has been of some use and I hope it's been enjoyable. Many, many thanks to subscribers. Real heartfelt thanks to you. Many, many massive thanks to patrons. Real heartfelt thanks to you too. As for me, I think that's it from me this week if you'd like to support this channel if you think yeah this old hippie's not doing too bad a job of keeping these old lenses alive you can do that over at www.patreon.com forward slash xenography but as for me that is it for today if you're not doing anything too irritating or bothersome next week please do join me at around the same time for a spot more xenography cheerio all <laughs>